cleansing and cleaning my body and my mind came from not eating animal products for a good while. And now I educate myself on the animal products that I do eat because I realize that the negative environment of animals is transferred into me. So their energy, the way that they were raised, the way that they felt, is then coming to me. So if something is raised in an aggressive, negative, toxic environment, if I eat that product, I'm then getting that. So those are my important cues into my first step into mental clarity and body flexibility. In order to really cleanse yourself, you need to remove those stuck animal fats that have built up in your body and created inflammation of the mind, of the gut, of your joints. So really limiting your animal products and cleansing as much as you can from animal products in order to clean your mind, clean your gut, and get back down to the earth and really root and ground and connect to the earth. And when you're ready to bring back animal products or if you're ready to investigate your animal products, really taking gratitude and love for this product and acknowledging it instead of just seeing it as an object because it is another being that you're ingesting that has given its life for you. Really taking that time to allow it and thank it for nourishing you to keep living. Where do I start? How do I begin? Well, the way that I began was by cutting out certain animal products in my diet and throughout that process I first cut out dairy, then I cut out meat, and now today, after I was vegan for two years, I've been conscious now for four years. Two, two, so I was vegan for two years, and um, now I consider myself a conscious eater for the last two years, which means, you know, first I cut out the animal products to decrease the inflammation in my body, to really clear out that, and I thought maybe that was the reason I was dealing with so many issues was maybe it was the animal products, maybe it was the meat. I read a lot of articles on that. So I cut out animal products for two years, and then I started getting really tired and weak, and my naturopath recommended I read the blood type diet book. So when I read the blood type diet book, it told me I'm a type O, which is the first blood type to exist in the human race and I thrive off of animal proteins, which is meat. So I had the topic of, okay, add in meat products to your diet and take out wheat and gluten products from your diet to feel at your best. And I was not happy at all about it. I was like, I've done so much work with veganism and being vegan and not eating meat. I don't want to eat meat. What am, how am I supposed to live? And my doctor said, you know, you have a choice of living and supplementing your life or eating whole foods to survive. And that really made me realize, you're right, I want to eat whole foods, I want to be a part of the land that I live on, I want to live locally, organically. And I started investing in farmers markets, I started meeting the farmers, investing in good quality animal products, how the animals are treated, are they treated in an organic environment? for the quality of the animals, but also the quality of our health as animal products. If it's an unorganic farm, if the farm is toxic, if it's really close and small for the animals, it can make the animals stressed, starved, diseased, anything like that. Is then When we eat the animal product, it's transferred to us through their animal fat cells, and it's transferred into our fat cells and it sticks in our body, and it builds up as fat and inflammation. So really investigating your animal products, what the environment it's coming from, if you can go to farmer's markets, meet your farmers, and maybe even check out the farm, or really just educate yourself on what kind of farms you want to support. I support organic farms that have open pasture raised animals, cage-free eggs, the chickens are rounding around and there's a new topic out called regenerative farming where farms are not only organic but they're working with the earth to regenerate the land 
while allowing the animals to graze and come through and rotate. So not only are they benefiting the animals and the people eating the animals, but they're also benefiting the land that's farming. Because most of the land that's over farmed is being destroyed and it's creating a lot of runoff when there's rain. And if it's unorganic, all of the pesticides and chemicals are in the soil and are washed down into the oceans and that's creating this huge toxic buildup in the ocean as well. So really investigating in your animal products, figuring that out and limiting your animal products. And meat was supposed to be a luxury. It has always been a luxury that you find an animal and you eat it and you're so grateful and you're really generous that it's given your life to eat for you to eat it and be nourished by it. And we have lost that disconnection because we go into a store and we see so many different animals, so many different meat products, and we just go in and buy it and eat it and no problem. We've lost that connection to the earth and to the animal. So really investigating into the animal, respecting it properly by only choosing animal products if it's well cared for and limiting your animal products because it's not sustainable for the earth. In my household, we eat meat once a month, maybe once a week, depending, and I think that that's doable for us. For you, if you eat animal products every day, maybe you could limit it to you know every other day or starting out gradually. My first trial and error of dieting was animal products. Namaste.